What is up, guys? It is the Alchemist of Sound, and I'm sitting here with Gershwan. And once again, we're back at it, answering your questions in another episode of For the Greater. Yeah. This is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put a question in front of your question, because we get to those questions first. That is what Florian did. Could her heretical psychers fuse their souls together to create an evil being similar to the way that the, the emperor got created? What would happen after that? I think so. Um, the uh, the lore of Warhammer 40k has, is filled with situations where um, chaos tries to bring back beings. Um, they, we saw it with the Iron Hands Primarch of Ferris Manus. Uh, it was like a psychic manifestation of his essence that was evil. Uh, we saw it with, with Horus. There was a clone of Horus that was, that was created. Um, I, I can see in the future GW creating a heretical or a chaos god emperor. Um, would they do it exactly the same way as what you just said? Maybe not. Maybe like they'll tie in like sacrifice and and like the four gods somehow. But yeah, I can see them creating like a super uh, god emperor. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's kind of already taken. Like you don't have the god emperor, but you have like Abaddon, which is going to be kind of like a counter to him in a way. Because right now they're playing it more that. Um, Gilliman is the counter to Abaddon, as can be seen in the models, because they're kind of posed similarly. Um, they both have, you know, one's got the Emperor's Sword, one's got Drachnian, um, so that's kind of a thing, but I don't know. I feel like if you just, if Chaos keeps copying everything that the Imperium has, I don't know. Like, usually, you have a Space Marine, and then you, like, chaos eyes him. This is going to be stronger because it's a regular space marine, but with the boons of chaos. Um, so, I feel like the opposite would actually happen if they tried to create the Emperor again. It'd be like a version of the Emperor, just not as strong. Yeah. So, I don't know. I feel like it'd be a waste of time to do that. Yeah. No, I, now I see your point now, because there is already a figure that kind of takes that role. Um, and creating a, a god emperor chaos person would be defeat the purpose of having Abaddon would defeat the purpose of having the Primaris or Demon Primarchs yeah but, but yeah. on that same ish topic Defool06 asks the forces of chaos are always interested in acquiring gene seed from the loyalist space marines was there any time that Grey Knight or even Custode gene seed was recovered by chaos not that I'm aware of as far as I know gene seed for uh, Grey Knight um, the original gene seed was rumored to be that of the Emperor, and I think that can't be tainted by chaos. And usually when the Grey Knights are put into action, they usually don't die, or if they do die, then everything's, like, fucked. <laughs> like, there's no way to recover the gene seed, because, like, they're either dead beyond, like, recovering the gene seed, or they're, they don't really care about gene seed, and they're more focused on making the planet into, like, a demon world or something like that. Yeah. And then custodes, they literally just recently went out to do their thing, so... It might be a while. Yeah. Next question comes from Oni. If there was a 40k Netflix show, who would you want as the lead actor as what character? Um, uh, Chris Tucker <laughs> as an Inquisitor. Danny DeVito as an inquisitor and Gilbert Gottfried as like his second in command why not first because his first in command would easily have to be uh, Steven Tyler I don't know who Steven Tyler is <laughs> he's a singer he sounds like a country band singer I think he was from Aerosmith oh anyways uh, uh, next question comes from Chad Skogfelt if the chatter can jungle fires if the Chatter can jungle fires are from a death world, do any Space Marine chapters recruit from there? Oh, if the Catachan <laughs> are jungle fighters, um, and that's a death world, can the Space Marines recruit from Catachan? No, the Space Marines cannot recruit from Catachan because Catachan is an Imperial world and uh, Imperial regiments are drawn from it. And you have to remember that in the, the, the military forces of 
the Imperium are all separated and they need to be because of the Horus Heresy. If you all of a sudden have a Space Marine chapter who wants to take recruits from Catachan, they're taking away from the Astra Militarum, uh, and then that's, that, that doesn't fly. That's like two different organizations trying to steal from the same pot. Mm -hmm. Take from the same pot. Our hands are going to get stuck. Whoa. Next question. Now, before I get to this question, I just want to say that somebody was trying to write out Fabius Bile in the comments, but it autocorrected to Fabulous Bill. <laughs> and now, I don't think I could go back. <laughs> yeah, that's his new name. It's not Fabius Bile, it's Fabulous Bill. Eustace asks, How come every race in 40k understands and speaks English? <laughs> um, they're speaking, what, Low Gothic or...? or... Yeah, so they, they speak a mixture of Low Gothic, High Gothic, and Grunge, I think it is. Grunge. I forget what they call it. Uh-huh. Um, but the reason for that is because of the Unification War. When the Unification War came about, the, obviously the Emperor was like, yeah, we all need to speak the same language, because mm -hmm. it's getting crazy. <laughs> um, and yeah. Yeah, when it comes to the Eldar, the Eldar have been alive for billions or hundreds, I don't know, a long ass time. So they've got free time to learn. The Tau Water cast have uh, translators. Um, orcs, they just normally speak low Gothic, right? Yep. Um, Tyranids don't speak, Necrons don't really speak, but when they do, they, they're, again, they're ancient, so they probably know the language anyway. Well, they actually have translators, so they have a technology that actually translates, uh, whatever the natives are speaking, and then they, like, process it, and then they can just say it. Hmm. Yeah. But, obviously, only the overlords can do that. Yeah, because, obviously, Necron warriors are just grunts, they don't, <coughs> they don't think for themselves. Yeah. And, um, Yeah. But I mean, I guess when you think about it, that's why there's so much interspecies battles that are like behind the scenes because obviously they can't communicate. Um, and they're just gonna fight. Yeah, and and but it also makes sense, I guess, uh, from a perspective of like globalization, right? Like we're already doing that. Like yeah. everybody's kind of learning English because uh, like in the states you speak English, everything else is like Chinese and Spanish. Uh, so eventually, like there will be three or or a couple of, of languages, and then they're all just gonna melt into one language. Even then, like it's, what do you call it? Like the mixing pot effect? Yeah. Um, like in the Tao Empire, obviously there's other races, but since the Tao are in control, obviously their main dialect is gonna be pushed on the subservient races. Yeah, even if you can't, even if you don't conceptualize things the same way, because that's what the Vespids are. Mm -hmm. The Vespids, when I did the Vespid lore, I learned that the Vespids um, when they first met the Tau, they thought the Tau, or they, they saw that the Tau had, um, yeah, I guess, like, shittier concepts of reality. Like, they, they didn't speak in time, uh, whereas the Vespids could process time differently. Um, but then they ended up getting those things attached to them, and now they speak the Tau language. Vespids were cool. Yeah, it sucks that they suck in the actual battlefield. And they can actually float in any type of air. That is crazy, though, yeah. Uh, next question. Uh, this one is by Tomato of Doom. What do you guys think would happen if the to the Imperium, and especially to the Space Marines, if Gilliman, uh, if not Gilliman, but maybe Rogodorn or Jack Tyke Han, was actually alive and leading the troops after the heresy? Would the codex change, and would it all be now a different uh, military structure? I wish I knew more about Jagatai Khan's, like, character. Um, I don't really know. Yeah, I feel like the only thing you really know about him is that they're based on the Mongols, and they're all about bikes. Bikes. Bikes! But uh, if there was Rogo Jorn, I feel like it'd be very similar to what Gilliman's doing now. Obviously, maybe not adhering to the codex 100%, but very similar to it. Yeah, because Rogodorn didn't like the Codex to start. He wanted to keep his legion sizes. Yeah. But besides that, I feel like Gilliman and Rogodorn are like on the same page. Or maybe that's what it would have been. Maybe like there wouldn't be an Imperium with like multiple chapters. It would just be like an Imperium with... One huge army. Or the, the 20 founding legions, mm -hmm. minus the traitors. Yeah. Um, next question comes from... You got one? <laughs> I can't say your name, but your question is a little interesting. Is there a chance of seeing the Hulk in a Space Hulk? 
Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, next question comes from the Zero Stroy. Um, Admac. What about machine spirits of things like cybernetic limbs or dreadnoughts? Do they become one with the user of those? So it depends on what you believe um, the machine spirit is. If you believe the machine spirit is an actual like um, entity, uh, then no. Like the, the machine spirit of your arm will like always be the machine spirit of your arm. It'll be separate from your entity. Um, if you believe that the, the machine spirit is just like a manifestation of the Imperium's lack of knowledge, uh, it doesn't really matter because it's, it's made up. <laughs> yeah. Next question. Marsh Quashi. Are there any female squats? And if yes, how come we've never seen any pictures of them? There is. So what happened to the squats is that the Tyranids basically consume their entire uh, planet. And there's very little squats that are left alive. So if there's a female squat... Um, they probably look the same as male squats. Maybe. Because yeah. like female dwarves and male dwarves look similar. Yeah, that's true. But yeah. Uh, this one I can't say his name, but on a scale of 1 to 10, where would you place each pre-heresy Primarch in general attractiveness? <laughs> Number one, Sanguinius. Number two, Fulgrim. And then last, Perturabo. Yep, that's perfect. The middle doesn't matter, because <laughs> you only go for the top. Last question comes from David Smith. Are the demons of chaos less potent in 40k than in fantasy? For instance, flesh hounds fighting swordsmen versus flesh hounds fighting imperial guardsmen. Um, yeah, demons are easy to kill. Yeah, I mean, I feel like just any regular human, at least in Age of Sigmar and fantasy, is able to take on a demon. But like, you see 40k, it's way more grim dark, and it's like, on a 101, it, the chances are very slim for any human, imperial guardsman for that matter, to survive against like a blood murder or... Even a nurgling, for that matter. Yeah. Those were the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, comment down below. Thank you guys so much for asking questions. And uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Yeah, keep those questions coming. And so will we. <laughs> <laughs> and on this on Alchemist. Christian one. And we are out. <laughs>